Hello guys and welcome to Wonder Trading. In today's video, I want to talk to you about our new version of the Wonder DCA strategy on TradingView. In this review, we're gonna go through the updated sections, such as risk and money management block, the filtering block, and the new exit block. So let's go into the trading view and I'll show you exactly what we're actually doing. In front of you, you can see the BTC USD chart for at the 15 minute time frame. And to add the Wunder DCA, just select the indicators and type Wunder DCA bot. Click on it to add it to the chart. And uh, once it's loaded, you would be able to see straight away the entries and exits and uh, which filter we're currently using. So if you want to have a look at the strategy itself, well, right now it's doing quite okay. It's better than buy and hold condition, as you can see by this blue line represented on the graph. So um, even with the default settings on Bitcoin for 15 minutes, it provides you with quite a nice uh, performance. But um, this video in particular is going to be concentrated on the actual features that we have rather than the settings uh, for the best and most optimized um, parameters for the indicator. So let's go into the settings of the strategy. The very first thing that we added is the backtest date range. This is what most of the users were asking because you want to check the backtest either for a particular time period or you would like your board to start from a particular time period. By default, both of those settings are disabled, but if you enable them, then the TradingView backtest will be counting the trades only within the range period. The next thing, which is a capital, this is the amount with which you enter in your initial entry. So over here, if I put 1000, that means my very first entry will be equal to $1,000. If you want to change the overall portfolio, you need to go to the properties and to change this initial capital. So at the moment, by default, it's going to be at 10,000. While we at the property tab, let me point to you that also the DCA script includes the general commissions, which is the very standard commission for most of the cryptocurrency exchanges. Okay, going back into the input tab. The next quite large and important block is the strategy settings, which will allow you to determine what will be the take profit, the stop loss, trailing stop, and move stop loss to break even targets. All of those can be either enabled or disabled. It also depends what is going to be the exit condition for your strategy. So let's go step by step. The first thing that you can see is that you can select the take profit and the stop loss target. If we enable the stop loss, the condition for risk and reward is going to be also enabled. But as you can see, there is currently an error in the script, which states basically that your stop loss value must exceed at least 8.28%. So why is that? And the reason behind this is because we're talking about the DCA strategy your stop loss could not be inside of the safety orders, which means that if you go to the DCA settings, we can see that the maximum number of DCA in the default script is five. So the total number of orders in this DCA will be five with a price deviation of two, which means that the stop loss of 3.5 is actually somewhere inside those safety orders. And we provide you with a tip what should be the minimum amount for this stop loss to be um, triggered with the settings of the DCA. So if you change it to 10, for example, you will see that the script is back to normal and it starts working again. For the risk and reward, the stop loss is the essential part because the stop loss is actually the primary target from which your reward is going to be calculated. So if you select the risk and reward feature, your take profit is going to be disabled because you cannot put anything manually. It will be automatically calculated 
based on the parameters inside of the risk and reward section. There's also a switch here between the simple fraction and a decimal. What that means that the simple fraction is a very standard way of presenting risk of equal to 1 and the reward equal to 2, which means that the take profit is going to be twice as higher in comparison to the risk. If you go into the decimals, it's actually just the alternative way of presenting the same idea. So if you put just 2, it's going to be exactly as risk equal to 1 and reward is equal to 2. Okay, so let's switch this off. The next block is going to be related to the trailing stop. Once again, by default, it is disabled. But if you would like to enable this, you will have two uh, input that you need to take into consideration. The one is trailing stop activation, which means what is the percentage the price should go in your direction before it's actually activate the trailing stop. And this trailing stop execution is the percentage by which the price will drop from your activation price until the position is going to be closed. The next section is uh, move stop loss to break even. Uh, so this is also in the percentage. So that means that if the price goes in your direction for, for example, 0.5% over here and then starts to retract back towards your entry point, your stop loss is moved to the entry point. The next block is the DCA settings and this is a pretty standard one. This is the one that you can see in our DCA board at Wunder Trading uh, or in the signal board at Wunder Trading. Um, they have the same names and the same uh, behavior. So the maximum DCA orders is the maximum number of orders in the position. The price deviation is this gap between the safety orders in percentage. The order size multiplier is the uh, multiplier that's going to be used on your initial value. So for example, if the initial value is 1000, as in this example, and you put the order size multiplier equal to 2, that means that your first safety order will be 2000. So 1000 as the initial order, 2000 as the first safety order, 4000 as the second safety order, and so on. And the price deviation multiplier is the multiplier that applied to the difference in the percentage between the safety orders. So it's basically applied to this price deviation parameter. The other two important things is how you're going to calculate your take profit and stop loss. So the two options which are available for the take profit is, is going to be calculated either from the average price, which means as soon as the new safety order is triggered, your take profit is going to be recalculated and it's going to be getting closer to the entry point. Or you can put it as the entry order, which means that regardless when the if the safety order is going to be triggered, the take profit is actually staying at the same level, which is represented by this green line over here on the chart. The DCA stop loss is actually very similar. You can calculate this based on the entry order, so from the original initial order, or is going to be adjusted based on the average price. Now we actually go into the core settings and those core settings are extremely important. They're split into three main sections. Number one is your entry conditions. So basically this is coming from the original DCA script that we had before. You can select the direction here and you can also select which indicator will be your entry condition. It can be either breakout, MACD, Bollinger Bands, price change, VWRSI, or as soon as possible. I just want to remind you that if you select as soon as possible, then you need to select the direction as well. It's going to be either long or short. The second part is the trend filter settings. This is the new part that we added because most of the users wanted us to um, help them to determine that if I have a trend filter and it's in the upward trend, I want to trade only in the long direction. So I will go with the market. And it's exactly the same for the short. So over here, you can select now the predefined super trend, SMA, EMA, TEMA and ATR parameters. 
The first ones are related to the trend indicators, which means that they will be following the trend. The ATR is related to the volatility. So if you want your DCA module operate in a volatile market in particular, then you can select the ATR and determine the threshold for which it's going to be um, operating as a filter. The next thing is the third section is the exit settings. So over here, you first need to select what are the actual options that you're going to use in order to exit the strategy. Initially, you can use only take profit. So anything related to the take profit target, stop loss, trailing stop, or move stop loss to break even will be triggered using take profit only. If you go into the indicators only tab, that means that you can now select the actual indicator, which will be used as your exit option. Once again, it's going to be RSI, SMA, CRSI, MACD or Super Trend. If you select the MACD indicator, we just wanted to show you that there are a number of options how the exit is going to be determined. Um, in the future, we're going to improve it even further and we're going to provide the same additional options for each of those indicators. So, those are the three main parts. The entry condition, the filter settings and the exit setting condition. The rest of the script is divided in exactly those blocks because in each of them, so for example, the entry condition indicators, if you select the breakout indicator, those would be the settings that you can change in order to improve the strategy. If you select the MACD, those will be the positions that you're going to need to change in order to improve the MACD and so on. The second section is going to be related to the filter indicator settings. And the third one is going to be related to your exit indicator settings. At the end, you all the time will have the comments to select and to create a wound trading bot. So let me guide you now through the process of how to create a wounded trading signal board using this particular strategy. Okay guys, I logged in into my account at wounded trading. So the first thing I want to do is actually to go to the signal board section and create the new bot. Over here, uh, you can name the bot the way you like. You can put the description to it, select the exchange account. If you don't have the exchange account connected yet, you can all the time use the demo account if you want. Select the API for it. And then uh, taking our example, we're going to do this for the BTC USDT pair. OK, so we'll select this one. The time frame for us is going to be 15 minutes. And then the entries, we're going to use the trading view alert as the entries and the rest is going to come from the form settings. So over here, it's quite important now to match the settings that you have in your trading view script to the form that we're currently filling in. So the first thing that we know for sure is that we're using 1000 as the initial value to actually enter the position. We don't have any order size multiplies. Now let's go back to the trading view. We're going to put this as a default. So reset the settings. We'll wait while the script is going to be updated. OK, so we're good to go here. And let us have a look at the um, setup. So the only thing we're using here is the take profit at 1% and those DCA settings, which are quite important for us. So that's exactly how we're going to do this in the signal board. So the take profit is going to be equal to 1% and we're going to close the whole position there. For the DCA module, let's just open this one. And for the DCA settings, um, let's put the same settings that we saw just now from TradingView. So the maximum number of orders is going to be 5, the price deviation is 2, the order size multiply and the price deviation multiply equal to 1. The take profit is actually based on the average price. So that's good. 
So let's click create the bot. And now in the second part of the creation of the bot, you do have the enter long, exit long commands uh, that you will have to input into the script. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put enter long right over here at the bottom. We're going to do exactly the same for the exit commands. And exactly the same for the enter short and exit short. Okay. Even though we're not using the exit all in this script, we can still input it there. Okay and just press OK. Now, if you want to set up the alert, just go into the settings of the script, add alert to Wunder DC bot. First thing you need to do is you need to change the message. Um, this script is actually using the commands in the alert function rather than a strategy order function. So what you will need to do is you will definitely need to place the strategy order alert message over here as a placeholder and it will pass the comments that we just inputted into the script. The second thing that you will need is actually to put the webhook, which is also presented over here. So you just copy it and place it over here. And then press create. Okay, so the alert is now actually created. Now you can go back to the creating the bot and just confirm that I have set my alerts you don't want to enter a position now and you just wait for the signal to come in. And that's how you create the bot using this particular script. In the future, we're going to update this script even further. As I mentioned to you, what we're going to do is we're going to improve the filtering process and the exit settings of this particular strategy. However, even at this point, it is actually not just a single standalone strategy. It's a um, full approach of how to use the DCA, how to set it up correctly, how to move along with the trends or use it primarily just with the high volatility markets. So there is plenty of features, plenty of inputs to play around and to come up with a profitable approach. Even by default, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the BTC USD is quite a pro in a profitable uh, state. It provides you with a very good performance in comparison to the buy and hold return of the same asset. Thank you very much guys for watching. Stay safe and best of luck with your trading.